Back inside our document here, we need to take care of one little piece of housekeeping before we get into our first sketch, and that is to go up to the document menu and then choose unit or workspace units. And you'll want that to match what I have for the easiest experience here. So for length, choose millimeter. For angle, choose degree. And then for mass unit, choose pound, although we won't be using this too much. But go ahead and hit accept. And now let's get into our first sketch. So to do that, what we're going to do is go ahead and hit the sketch button on the toolbar. The shortcut for this is S. And any keyboard shortcuts I use, I'll have them show up on the screen for you. So you won't, you'll never have to worry about what key I'm hitting. And as well, if I don't take, and I don't, because we don't have an unlimited amount of time here, to explain some of the commands, if I don't get to it and I just start using them, the easiest way to know how a command works is to simply just hover your mouse over the icon on the toolbar and it'll give you a numeric list for how to use each command in Onshape. So we'll choose the sketch button in the toolbar. And now we need to select a plane. So we'll choose the top plane because this is going to be the main outline sketch of our frame. And then we'll want to view normal to this. So we'll go ahead and just uh, open up the context menu and hit view normal to sketch plane. And to hide the other planes, you can either go and do it one at a time if you only want one. In our case, we'll hit P as in plane on the keyboard, and that will hide all planes in the workspace. The first entity that we are going to sketch is a center diameter circle. So let's go ahead and grab that from up here. Choose the origin as our center. Drag it out. Grab our dimension tool, or D on the keyboard. Select the circle, and we'll type in 4.5 IN for inch which it'll automatically convert to millimeters. This is going to be the size of our print bed or the working area of our print bed. It'll be a little larger with some mounting tabs coming off, but this will be the active print area, four and a half inch disc. Now to exit any command, either hit escape on your keyboard or you can open up the context menu, hit escape dimension, hit escape line, whatever it will be. It'll be up here, the first one on the list, or you can hit the keyboard shortcut again. So D opens dimension, but D also closes it. Same with line. L opens line, but L also closes it. So let's make the other sketches we need here. We're basically going to sketch one third of the frame and then mirror it around three times so that it can be, it's very parametric and easy to modify if we need to at the end. The next thing we will sketch is a center point rectangle, which is right here. Let's go ahead and grab that. Choose the origin again. We'll just draw it out to be something slightly larger. We'll scroll out a little bit. And we want to dimension this, D on the keyboard, to be 220 by 220. And this is the dimensions that we want to keep the printer inside of because this is how large, such as an Ultimaker 2 or a Robo 3D, a common larger desktop 3D printer can easily print this then so that you guys can go ahead and make one if you so choose. These two entities are really just for reference on this particular sketch and in this particular part studio. So what we need to do is make these into construction so they don't interfere with our extrude profiles later on. So to do that, let's hold down our right, our left mouse button rather, do a big drag to the left, and then make these all for construction so that they don't interfere with our sketch profiles. The next thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and scroll a little bit. Let's go ahead and sketch ourselves some lines dividing up this circle so that we get e into equal thirds of a pie here. So to do that, we're gonna give ourselves a center line first. We'll just draw this one down. Make sure that it's not uh, creating the intersection for itself there, the coincident constraint. Let's go ahead and draw that down. And we'll draw one off to the side here, as well as up in this direction. However, you see there how this made a perpendicular constraint for itself. To get rid of constraints, it's very easy. Just hover over whatever line has a constraint or point, whatever it may be, and hold down the shift key, and then you can select the constraint and hit delete on the keyboard, and then it goes away. So let's dimension an angle in here to be 30 degrees, or 60 rather, excuse me, as well as this line. And then what we've also done We'll mirror this over quickly, and then I'll show you what we've done here. So to do that, we'll grab the mirror command, choose our mirror line, and then the entities we want to mirror, 
and we'll hit escape. So what we've done here is we have divided up our sketch so that we can just do one arm per se of the frame, but we also have where the three towers should lie at the 120 degree marks of what would have been an equilateral triangle. So let's go ahead and move on and sketch the rest of the bottom of the frame.